Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, I'm excited to share the walkthrough and build process for my first attempt at creating a freestanding hydroponic grow garden tower. Lately, I've been super into growing my own veggies for eating, and one thing I've noticed, aside from the time it takes to maintain my garden, is the cost involved. Not only do you have to keep buying soil, fertilizer, nutrients, and other supplies, but it also takes up a ton of space. Plus, since I live in an area with unpredictable weather, I can only harvest my crops seasonally. From what I've heard and read, veggies grown in hydroponic systems are healthier and taste way better anyway. Some of the materials I picked up at local stores and some I have purchased on Amazon like the PVC pipes a small water pump to keep the water flowing and recycling through the system and some other small accessories I will leave you the links in the text instruction DIY. So, for this DIY project, I decided to grab this 300mm miter saw from DeWalt you can see here. To start, my main structure for holding all the plant pots will be this PVC pipe with a diameter of 100mm and 1000mm length. I am using an additional 500mm pipe to extend the tower to 1500mm. The circumference of this 100mm PVC pipe is about 31cm all around which means I can cut about three potholes in each row. Technically, I could cut up to four holes, but I want to make sure each pod has enough space for the roots to grow without crowding the inner tube and affecting the water flow. So, first things first. We create a template to accurately outline where we should cut the potholes for the tower since the 100mm PVC measures 31cm in circumference allowing me to comfortably place three to four spots on each row. If you want a copy of this template, just let me know in the comments below. I originally planned my template for three pots per row. For the template itself, I drew three long lines spaced about 10 centimeters apart. I also marked a line for the cutout on each of those lines, measuring four to five centimeters. Using the three long lines as the center point, I measured another 10 centimeters down from the first row of cutout lines to create a staggered row of cutout lines, which were also spaced 10 centimeters apart. I repeated this for a third row. This spacing guarantees enough distance between each pot for root and plant growth. If you want a copy of this template, just let me know in the comments below, and I'll upload it on our website that everyone can access. I recommend using a PVC laminate or durable fabric material. This guide will be super useful because I plan to create a lot more hydroponic tubes. Thanks to this guide, every hydroponic tube I make will be identical to the last one. I designed the guide so that the top portion is longer before the first slit than the bottom, which is a bit shorter. The reason for this is that when I place it on the tube, I want to ensure there's enough clearance from the top to put the cap on and allow the water to flow down and reach every single pod. So, stick around to see the whole build process, and how it turns out. To use this, I'll just go along with my pencil and trace every port and slit on the guide all the way around. This gives me a solid guide for cutting my holes with my miter saw. A pencil works well because it can write on these PVC pipes, so I'll go around and draw all my lines using the guide itself, ensuring that the spacing between all the cuts are perfect and uniform to get a order's view. So once I'm finished with that, all I need to do is shift it down and align the next set of lines. I find the lines and match them up, and everything will line up perfectly. 
then I'll know where to begin my next step. I just have to go around and mark it, and it will be uniform all around. I'll keep moving down until I locate my lines again and mark those too. Now, as I approach the bottom of this tube, I want to ensure I leave enough space because water will collect and flow down here. I don't want to extend these lines all the way to the bottom. I think four sets should be sufficient to fully utilize the tube, providing plenty of holes for the hydroponics garden. As you can see, if I bring it closer, all the markings are evenly spaced across the tube itself, so the guide is really helpful. When using a 5-foot pole, you can probably fit 11 to 12 rows, resulting in either 33 or 36 pods, which is quite a lot. It's important to maintain some distance from the ground since you don't want your plants touching it, and you also need to make space for whatever reservoir you'll be using to hold the water when you insert this tube into it. Next, I'm going to take my fully marked PVC tube back to my miter saw and cut along all the lines I made. Not all the way through the pipe, just deep enough to cut through the length of the lines. You don't have to use a miter saw. A PVC pipe saw works too, but I prefer the miter saw because it's much faster. When you're done, you should have a base PVC pipe with evenly spaced cuts in it. There are tons of companies out there selling hydroponic grow gardens like this one, but they're super pricey, costing anywhere from $300 to $500 for one of these towers. I thought this was something I could handle on my own, so I began working on building my own version. I figured I could do it for a fraction of the cost, and save money not just on the build but also on soil and water. For the next step, you'll need a heat gun or some heating element to slightly melt the PVC, making it more flexible for your work. In my case, I have a heat gun. You'll also need a bottle, and I'm using this Tavana bottle since it's about the size of the 2-inch PVC, which is the ring I'll insert to hold the little pods. This should work fine for my 2-inch pods. I've also got a bowl of cold water with a rag in it to cool down the PVC pipe, helping it retain its shape once formed. Alright, let's turn on the heat gun and focus it right on the PVC pipe. 
you'll see the pipe start to bend a bit, but be careful not to burn it. Now stick the bottle in. After cooling it down, it hardens. Once the main 4-inch PVC pipe for the pods is done, we'll move on to the water delivery system for this hydroponics tower. So, here's the pump itself. It's a 24 watt model that comes with an instruction manual and a registration card. It also includes several attachments for different sizes, but we won't be using those. The pump looks pretty standard. It has the typical front that draws in water and pumps it up through the top. This pump is designed for both fish tanks and hydroponics, and it should generate enough pressure to push water at least 10 feet. We leave you the link in the description. Since our hydroponics tower is only 5 feet tall, this should definitely provide enough pressure to get the water all the way to the top. Here's how it works. This half-inch tube connected to the pump will be positioned in the center, and it's a bit taller because we have another attachment and a cap to add on. Plus, it needs to hover a little above the base. We need a half inch PVC pipe, measuring about 4.7 feet as we want it to be a bit lower than the tower itself. We'll prop it up a bit to ensure it hits the blade properly. We're about to hook this up to the standard water pump. Now, to connect this half inch PVC pipe to the pump, we have a half inch connector with a screw adapter that fits perfectly on top of the pump. From there, you just push the end of your PVC pipe into it, and it holds pretty securely. This part of the pump connects to the reservoir, and this tube runs through the center of the hydroponics tower.
you are welcome to visit our channel and watch some of our other interesting DIY videos. For example how to carve a natural marble stone sink only with an angle grinder. So that was actually it guys. Hope you enjoyed our little hydro tower DIY project. The last thing we are going to do now is filling the water tank at the bottom with enough water and plug in the water pump. For this project we were growing without fertilizers, which extends the growing process up to 2 to 3 weeks. For faster results you should use the perfect vegetable fertilizer. Comment fertilizer below and we let you know which one will work best. As you can see the system is working perfectly, so now we connect the water pump to a pluggable timer and set up the timer that the watering process will run 15 minutes each hour. We will leave you the link in the description. As we are not going to use soil we need a frequent watering cycle. Hope you guys enjoy our hydro tower DIY. If you do please share the video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. We see you guys in our next video, have a great time!